Okay. Radiation therapy isn't the only um, cardiotoxic agent used in the treatment of breast cancer. Systemic therapies can be cardiotoxic. This slide is from a landmark analysis from Sarah Darby, the New England Journal in 2013, which through modeling, they estimated that for every gray in mean heart dose given to the heart, there was more than a 7% increase in um, toxic cardiac events, including MIs, um, which is intense, right? They, they said it was linear with no threshold, with doses as low as two gray. You know, in the past, we would attribute cardiac disease to whole mantle field radiation therapy where the whole heart got 40 gray, but this is low dose, linear, no threshold. Okay. And another important thing to, that I'm, I'm going to talk about is whether or not we treat internal mammary nodes in left-sided breast cancer. If the internal mammary nodal chain is not irradiated, we have mean heart doses. That, and again, these seem shockingly high to me with modern, modern standards. But published data, we have an average of a mean heart dose less than 5 gray, whereas if the IMNs are targeted when treating left-sided breast cancer, mean heart dose is, is 8 gray, which is a lot a lot of dose to the heart, especially given Sarah Darby's publication that for every gray increase, you really increase your risk of having cardiotoxicity. So these are just three titles of, of randomized trials that demonstrate the improvement in breast cancer specific in one and overall survival when internal mammary nodes are treated. This is one of the very controversial topics and especially breast radiation therapy, but radiation therapy in general, should you treat the internal mammaries? I was, I was trained to treat them when positive, when, when the axillary po nodes are positive, but many people don't. That said, I think that there is compelling data to support their use. Okay. How do we limit the heart dose? Well, there's multiple different ways. Sometimes we can just not irradiate patients. The seven-year-old women with small ERPR positive node negative cancers, there's good evidence that they probably will die from something else other than their breast cancer. We can do partial breast irradiation, and I think that more long-term data we're waiting on. Um, but off trial, the group of patients that should be treated with APBI is, is not a large amount of patients. There's the obvious heart block, which even when I do DIVH, we use a heart block. Okay. You can match electron fields. You can change patients' anatomy by putting them prone, by lying them on their side. You can do IMRT field and field, or some people do ARC therapy, 7, 9, conventional IMRT fields. And then you can gate, obviously, which is what we choose to do. Um, and protons, too, but I think protons should be used for kids, but that's, that, that's my thought. Okay. Previous study by my chair and mentor, Larry Marks, showed that it's a little percent, that should say 30% at six months had a perfusion defect. 50% at two years had a perfusion defect after being irradiated with non breath hole, just standard tangential beam radiation. These spec scans are, are kind of an outdated imaging modality, but they are the standard or accepted standard of care in this field to demonstrate objective evidence of radiation induced cardiac injury. And you can see on the right that basically the larger portion of the ventricle that was included, the more likely to have a bigger or and a defect in be, to have a cardiac perfusion defect. So when you do a deep inspiratory breath hold, you, the heart moves inferiorly, medially, and posteriorly, and essentially out of the beam in the large majority of patients. Okay. How do you gate? Well, there's this company called Vision RT, which is what we use. I've used RPM in the past. I haven't used ABC. Um, I have heard that ABC is somewhat uncomfortable for patients because there's the mouth guard and there's this pressure, but I don't know. I, I've only worked with the top two. So this is a slide demonstrating tangential beams on a CT planning scan, which treats the heart to a significant degree, giving a mean heart dose on the order of two and a half gray, but with the use of respiratory maneuvers, i.e. DIVH, the mean heart dose was re reduced to 90 centigrade, okay? So back a couple of years ago, you know, we've been using Vision RT, I think, for five years right now, and we looked at 50 patients that we had, had already treated, and we basically pulled their port films and did a, just basically saw how we were doing. It took only about 12 minutes or less to treat these patients, which in the beginning it took a lot longer until we'll, our therapist became more comfortable with the setting up of the surface, the surface rendering. Um, and again, I, I made a typo here, but essentially in all the port films we looked at, 
the cardiac shadow was more than two millimeters away from the, the port. So we were actually, not only did we plan them to be out of the, the plan the heart to be out of the field, but in, pra, in the practical day-to-day -day setup, the heart was out of the field as evidenced by this port film analysis, okay? So the next study that we did was we wanted to use the SPEC scan, so the single photon emission CTs, before and after left side of breast radiation to see if we could prevent cardiac perfusion defects. Okay, so it was IRB, sure. Um, we didn't mandate whether it was going to be tangential beams. We allowed regional nodal irradiation. The only, the only way, well, the, the qualifier to get in the study was you had le left side of breast cancer and you were going to get radiation and that we could get your heart out of the field with the use of a, a breast uh, DIVH. We had 20 patients. The median age was 56. Um, a, oh, a third of them, we treated their upper IMNs with partially wide tangents, so not a separate third uh, anterior IMN field. And about a quarter of them, we also treated their superclav. We were able to achieve may, um, mean heart doses on the order of less than one gray. So, and this was all from internal scatter, because when the heart is completely blocked from the radiation beam, the only dose it gets is from scatter. So if we go back to this Sarah Darby curve, where she saw you know, the average heart dose in left side of breast cancer patients was four gray. Um, our average in our patients was 94 centigray. And then if we look at this, the meta-analysis looking at whether or not the IMNs were treated, the heart dose of eight and a half gray is significantly higher than four, obviously, and even much higher than our less than one gray. And in our patients, we did not observe any perfusion defects at, at the six-month interval, whereas published data says, depending on what paper you read, between 30 and 40 percent of left-sided patients that have part of their left ventricle in the field will develop a perfusion defect. Um, I must say that we don't really know what to make of these perfusion defects. They are objective evidence of cardiac injury, meaning that there's areas of decreased perfusion, but studies haven't borne out um, whether you develop a perfusion defect or are you going to go on to develop an MI. But it is the earliest um, and it is the gold standard to say whether there is radiation-induced cardiac injury. So what conclusions do we have? DIBH is extremely well tolerated. I didn't really go into it, but you know, 99% of the patients with left side of breast cancer get treated with DIBH at our institution. The instructions are easy. That these aren't two-minute breath holds that Michael Phelps and only Michael Phelps can do. Um, it's a really easy treatment. We're able to show that well, we're able to decrease the mean dose to the heart with this technique. And I think that I'll add that that's especially important when we're treating internal mammary nodes. So if you believe that IMN radiation improves survival, and I do, we want to limit the dose to the heart. And we have not seen any perfusion or wall motion defects when we've used this technique. I'd like to thank, these are my collaborators, especially Orit Person, who's like my work wife and does all of my work for me. Questions?